problem number eight. So here we have two problem number eight. Here we have two uh, geometric figures. One is a triangle, the other one is a rectangle. Uh, the triangle is isosceles, which means the two sides are the same. Okay, so we know they have the same parameter, and then we need to figure out the, uh, the length of this rectangle. Okay, what do we do is, let's just apply um, formulas for the parameter, right? So parameter. For the triangle, it's 14. So this 12, this is total 12. The 14 plus 12 plus uh, 12, uh, that's, uh, this is uh, 24, right? So this is 24 and plus uh, 14. We'll get a uh, 38, 38, okay? And then we calculate, so we get um, the parameter of this is also 38. Okay, now here we have this one is eight. Uh, let me uh, redraw it right here. So we got this is eight, this is eight, this is x, and this is x, this is what we need to figure out, right? Okay, so I have this is eight and this is eight. Then this two combined together equals 38 minus uh, 16, which is eight times two. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, 22. Uh, 22 is two copies of x. We need to split. So we derive, we get from here, we derive the x is 11 because it's twice of x. All right, so we get this 11. Question nine. Question nine is we are going to, uh, so uh, we have two people, Anton and Betty. Uh, they are going to sit on a row of four chairs. And the requirement is uh, they don't want to sit next to each other, well, for whatever reason. And then the question is, in how many ways that uh, we, can, uh, we can accommodate them, right? Okay, so let's draw the picture. Here we have four chairs. Let's see. Okay, so first let's uh, find out uh, which two chairs I can select. So I can select these two chairs to accommodate A and B, right? Or I can uh, enter and the bed team. Or I can do uh, these two chairs. Or we can do these two chairs, right? All right. Oh, oops. Okay. All right. Now, uh, for each, uh, for each uh, uh, selection of chairs, we can have A, we can have A, A represents Anton and B represents Betty. So we can have A, B, or we can have B, A, right? So we have two ways because we can switch them. So each we have two, so we have two. And similarly, here we also have two, we have A, B, A, B, right? So B, A, we have A, B, and we have B, A, right? So we have two, we have two, two for each uh, arrangements of uh, chairs. So the total, so the total is two times three, that's uh, six. Problem 10, four brothers have uh, eaten 11 cookies in total and each of them have eaten at least one and no two of them have eaten the same number of cookies. Now in total, they, three of them are uh, eight, nine cookies and one of them ate uh, uh, three cookies. So what we need to figure out is the, uh, uh, the number of cookies, the largest number of cookies that have been eaten by one of them. All right. Okay, so let's uh, draw a picture. So we have four brothers. Let's say just A, B, C, D, okay? Uh, each of them ate at least one. So it's at least one, that block here. And then in total, they ate uh, 11. So add them together. In total is 11, equals 11. Uh, three of them ate nine cookies. So let's say just A, B, C, doesn't matter. So nine cookies, uh, one of them, uh, have eaten exactly three. So let's say uh, C ate exactly three. Okay, so then we have get uh, D ate uh, two, which is 11 minus nine. All right, let's see A and B. So we have A plus B is nine minus three, which is six. Now for six, we have several different combinations, right? So we can do uh, six is uh, five plus one. We can do is three plus three. We can do is four plus two. But nevertheless, recall that no two of them have eaten the same number of cookies. So this is impossible. Now four plus two is also impossible. That's because D already ate two. So this one is impossible. Let's get rid of. Then the only possible combination is five plus one. 
Now, if S for A and B, which has five, which has one, doesn't matter. So the point is, we get the largest, we get the largest value is five. So that's the largest number of cookies uh, that was eaten by uh, one of them. So that's the answer is five. All right. Uh, number 11. Mr. Euler wants to divide kids in his class into groups with uh, equal number of kids in each group. So if the number of groups are uh, each, okay, so if uh, when each group has four kids, uh, two more than the number of groups, when each group has uh, six kids, what's the total number of kids in uh, Mr. Euler's class? All right, uh, let's draw the picture. If so here, what do we, we don't know? So at first, we don't know uh, how many groups, let's say if each group has four Ks or each group has uh, six Ks. So let's say we have, um, uh, so this is the six group, uh, six, uh, if each group has six K, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Now, if into a, uh, groups, each group has four Ks, then we get two more groups. has two more groups, right? Okay, so uh, you see the point is, because we have this extra two groups and the, the number of cases, the total number of cases is the same. So if I move these two groups, if I uh, let the case in these two groups, which is eight, right? So I have eight cases here. So I move eight cases to this, uh, to other groups. Uh, for each group, I add two more, I add two more add a two, add a two, in order to get a six, right? Because this is four and this is six. Then, I'm good. then we have the same number of, uh, of groups. Now, for eight people, I distribute, for, I get two to put add into uh, each group. Uh, okay, so how many group I can add? So I get is the number, so I get the number goes here. So the number of groups equals uh, eight, divided by two, which is four. All right, so I get four groups here. Okay, good. So then I, I we get, so this is four group. So from here, then we quickly get uh, the total number, the total number of kids equals six times four, which is 24. So here are the trick is for that extra two groups, we can just uh, put the data, we have six, eight people. Now we can put the, add these eight people back to those uh, other groups to make group uh, a number of students in each group of four to a six, and they should be the same, right? So then we should have, uh, we you quickly get, uh, there should be four groups. Problem number 12. So here we have a picture. Uh, it, it asks each number represents the amount of time. Let's say the number of minutes, you go, you go from one point to another. Let's say from G and here, uh, from G to E, we need uh, uh, six, uh, five minutes. Okay, so the question asks, if one go from A to the point B, right? So we have, uh, we have different uh, path to go from A to B, and we need to find the, uh, the quickest path, quickest path uh, in terms of the number of minutes you need. So for this one, you can just check a, a different path and it's easy to identify this is the quickest path. So this is the quickest. So the time you need in minutes, is one plus five plus six plus four, which is 16. Problem number 13. Here we have uh, two squares. One square, we know the area is 64 square meters. And the other one, what we know is its parameter, that is 64 meters. Now we need to find, based on this uh, information, we need to find the difference of their areas. All right, so for the first one, if the area is uh, 60, uh, uh, 64, right? So this is already 64, uh, we don't need to do anything. Uh, for the next one, because what we know is a parameter. So a parameter, that is, um, is the uh, sum of uh, four edges, right? Because uh, the length of uh, those four edges are the same. If it's 64, we get each one is 60. Uh, six or 16, uh, 16, right? 16 is, 64 divided by four. All right, then we get its area. So for area of this one, so what's the area? The area is 16 times 16, right? So this is how we calculate the area of a square. So that's 256. Now what we want is the difference. So what's the difference? The difference 256 uh, minus 64, that's 192. Okay, so problem number 14. 
Uh, in this problem, we need to sum up all two digit numbers that had at least uh, uh, six. So we have two categories. So case one is the six that appears, at least one six that appears on the ones position. Then we have uh, case two, the six appears on the uh, tens position. Now there's the one that appears in both uh, categories, that's 66. Right, so let's do case by case. So case one is we have, uh, so this is case one. So we have start from 16, 26, uh, all the way to uh, 96. Uh, there's a special one that's uh, 66, right? So we sum them up. Then uh, case two, six is on the tenth position. So we start from uh, 60, 61, and then all the way to 69, and then we add them together, right? Okay, again, 66 appears in both positions. Now, let's calculate this one. So this is 10 plus 20 and all the way to a 90. And then we have a six times nine, right? We just add a one's position, then we add a, uh, the tens position. Okay, so this one will calculate 100, uh, 450 because one plus two plus all the nine, which is 54, you multiply by 10. And then you plus uh, 54. So here what we get is uh, 504, right? 504 for this part. Now let's calculate this part. So this part that we have is uh, 60, uh, we have 1060 and then plus one plus two and the, the, all the way to nine. Uh, for this, we get is uh, 45, so this is 600. If you combine uh, for this part, you uh, 60, uh, 60 uh, 600, uh, 600. Now, so this is uh, 60, 40, uh, 645. All right, okay, so then if we combine these two things together, uh, we get the total sum right here, this shall be uh, five, oops. So here should be 504, right, 504, and then plus 60, uh, 645. But because here we have uh, 66 that appears in both places, it's uh, counted twice, so we have to minus it. So we have to minus 66. Uh, let's see uh, what we have. Okay, so we have this add together, uh, it's uh, 1149. Uh, a minus 66, so we get this three. Okay, so this is eight, uh, it's 1083.